Sir, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Just wait for a few minutes. Okay, okay, sir. So, whoever is able to hear me, just uh, let me know in the chat. So, Karthik, I'm audible, right? Sir, you're audible, sir. Okay, fine. And what about screen? Screen is visible, sir. Okay. So only four are joined. Uh, yeah. So any questions? No, sir. <laughs> okay. So let's wait for some time. So yeah. actually, to be honest, I did not start studying at all. I was not feeling well. So I was not kind feeling of... well. He was well. Who is this, Ritu Ayer? Yes, sir. I'm not feeling much. I sir, that was Akshay, sir. That was Akshay, sir. I could hear Karthik again, Ritu, and the other one is Akshay, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Akshay, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, what is the police? Sir. Ah. Ah, yes, sir. Any important uh, something is there, sir. Four chapters, sir. Yes. Important, I'll discuss all the concepts required. Okay. You have to understand okay, sir. And then you have to apply. <laughs> okay. So it's not difficult, I'll tell you. Okay, okay sir. So seven people are there. Just wait for two minutes. So, like, uh, all the teachers have, have you also prepared like two sets of question papers, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one set has got uh, one mark questions as MCQs. Okay. Second okay. set, it's um, not MCQ. It's like uh, fill in the blank, something like that. So, if you could have given MCQs in both the papers, no, sir. Yeah, I forgot. Sir. So, if you are lucky. At least have your case study, sir. No, there is no case study. So it's like problems. Problems? Okay, sir. <clears throat> no derivation also. It's like understanding the thing and then you have to solve problems. No derivation, sir, in both the papers? Yeah. So it's filled with problems. Yeah. So this is just first four chapters, right? Electrostatics, uh -huh. capacitance, current electricity, and magnetism. So, yes, sir. how much you remember all these things? Like 25%. Okay. I guess, sir, I'm not sure actually because I just now woke up from sleep and saw the message, to be honest. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. I was not feeling well. Otherwise, I could have prepared a lot. But... Okay. Uh, right. Tomorrow evening is the test. Yes, sir. The test is in the yes, evening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the same as We have two more classes tomorrow, right? Sir, you can take yes, English period also, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So most of you are blank then. Yes, sir. Huh? Like we don't know where to start, sir. Like we are confused on where to start and how to start. I have... Okay, let's say you have to take short notes, no? If you take short yes, sir, notes. Sir, I took short notes. Okay. So if you do those short notes, you have to read from the start from the beginning. All chapters. Sir, but it will take too much time to study, right, sir? 
if we study that's why i'm saying short notes are for that problem no for, for that uh, this thing only short notes you already whatever you stored in your memory you don't have to write it down only things which you half understand or don't understand those things you have to write and then you have to revise yes sir Okay, we'll start in two more minutes. Uh, we we'll start at nine five. It's nine three now. Uh, so, we, which is the all chapters are equally difficult or what? So we are not feeling difficult. We are so confused where to start, what we need to study for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir, chapter two is quite hard, sir. Like compared to four, three, and one, chapter two is very like long and has many confusing formulas, sir. Ah, uh, that's because there was no test in that, no. Sir, yes, sir, chapter two actually we have a lot of formulas, no, sir, and we don't know what formula to apply at what concept. Uh, no, there is one capacitance concept, potential energy concept. Potential energy of two point charges is K into Q1, Q2 by R. Sir, actually, uh, we are not confused of the, about the con concentration. We are just confused on where to apply the formula. Like, we have like n number of formulas no, sir. so you don't know what formula to apply at what kind of problem mm, that means you're not, you're not understood the formula actually chapter 2 is a little bit easier compared to chapter 1 should be because chapter 2 is scalar right connection is a scalar yes sir okay it's 9.5 Okay, the first concept is what chapter concept? we are starting, sir. Sorry. With uh, now what what chapter we are starting now, sir? Uh, uh, it's not exactly chapter wise. I'll try to maintain chapter wise, but uh, I'm doing according to what I have in my hand. Okay, sir. Okay, so first concept is quantization of charge. Okay, so uh, what is quantization of charge? Anyone? Q is equal to N into E. Okay. Again, you are saying the uh, formula. So basically, if you have to charge your body, okay, I have to remove electrons or I have to add electrons, right? If you remove electrons, it will become positively charged. Okay. If I add electrons, it will become negatively charged. So if you remove two electrons, the charge of with the body will be plus 2E, right? If you remove 1000 electrons, the charge applied by the body will be 1000 E. Similarly, if you add 100 electrons, it will appear a negative charge of 100 E. So, but I cannot charge a body of 2.5 electrons, electron charge. Okay, so this is called, uh, this is not possible. Fraction of an electron charge is not possible. That, that because I cannot remove fraction of an electron. And one electron charge is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. So, so I can charge a body of charge 1.6 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs and also 16 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. That means I have to remove 10 electrons. But I cannot have a charge of 1.7 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. So, is this concept clear? Anyone has doubt in this? No, sir. Oh, the basic idea is I cannot remove or add fraction of the charge. I mean, I cannot break okay, an electron and remove it, right? Either I can remove yes, a full electron or 10 electrons or 11 electrons, 12 electrons, not 11.5 electrons. Okay. So that creates a quantization of charge. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Art again. Uh, understood no 
नो मीन हाँ टेल मी Uh, can yes, you teach sir. it again, sir? Yes, sir. Now I joined. Okay. See, for charging a body, you can either do that by either adding electrons or removing electrons. Because in a solid, you have an atom, right? Which is nothing but nucleus. It has got some protons and neutrons, right? We won't touch this one. Only the electrons outside, I can remove or I can add extra electrons. Is this clear? So if I yes, add electron to an yes, atom, it will become negative charge. If I remove electrons, it will become positive charge. Okay. So if I remove okay, electrons, the charge applied by the body will be 2E, which is 3.2 into 10 to minus 19 coulombs. Because 1E is 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb, right? Electron charge. Hi, yes, sir. Uh, so I cannot charge a body of value 2 into 10 to minus 19 coulombs. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Because 2 means oh, okay, have an electron and then a fraction of an electron. Sir, okay, so sir. 2 electron, uh, if you add or remove 2 into 10 to the power minus 19, that's all, sir. Uh, it will become 3.2 then. 3.2 to 10 to minus 19. Okay, sir. Okay. So... I cannot so, have a charge of 3.1 into 10 to minus 19. Okay, I cannot remove a fraction of electron. I cannot break the electron. Understood? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 11. Okay. So, based on this, you have to answer your question. Like in the exam, sir, we have this. Like, Yes. So, like, the, this, like, what concept you are teaching now? Is it important for the exam? Sir? Yes. I'll just tell you the okay. concepts. I will not discuss the question. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay. So, okay, Coulomb's law uh, gives force between two point charges, right? Yes, sir. They have two point charges. So, in reality, there is no point charge, right? Point charge means size is zero. Huh. Okay. So under what condition we can make this assumption as a point charge? So you can make the assumption as a point charge if the size of the charged body is based on some body, right? So the size of this body is much, much less compared to the distance between the two. Okay, then we can assume it's a point charge. This assumption is a good assumption. Is it clear? Sir. Yes, sir. See, Coulomb's law is for point charges, no? Start again. Yes, sir. Listening, ah. sir. Yeah. So, but in reality, there are no point charges. Point charge size is what? Zero. Point size is zero, right? Yes, sir. So, you cannot have a physical object. Whose size is zero. Okay. So, okay, sir. Reality is the size of that object or the charged body, it's very small compared to the distance between the two objects. Okay. Then I can make this assumption that this body is a point, point object or point charge. Like, for example, yes, I have sun, right? And earth. For the gravitational force between them, I can use the formula G into mm by the distance between the two square. Okay, this is actually two for point objects. But the distance between the sun and the moon is so large, the size of this object is small. Then I can make the assumption that this masses are point masses. Similarly, in electrostatics, which gives force or cooling which is force by two point charges, this assumption is valid if the size of the charged body is much smaller compared to the distance between them. Is it clear? Okay, yes, sir. sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, next concept. So, electric field is there, say, in this space. 
everywhere. So we can uh, draw electric field lines, or I can also draw electric field vectors. So to get the electric field line, I have to draw a curve, which is tangent to all these vectors. This is the field line. Remember? Yes, sir. Okay, so these are electric field lines. So if you want to move from, if you want to move a charge, say positive charge, just a minute. Say I want to move a positive charge from, let's go from this point to this point. Uh, what is the work that to move from P to Q? Work is required or not? Positive charge, this is the ratio of the electric field. No, sir, work is not required, no, sir, yeah. because it is moved yeah. along the direction of electric yeah. field. Work done is zero, sir. Work not done zero. is zero. Work done is negative. Ah, work done is negative. Okay. Because uh, I can see the force on the charge. Okay, so on the the force on the uh, charge particle is Q and T. So we keep this charge Q here on its own, it will go to this point P. So actually, there's no work required to move the charge from Q to P to Q. So actually, the work is negative. But suppose I want to get this charge back to this from Q to P. Here, the work done is positive, right? Yeah. Okay. So the work done to move up charge along the closed path, say to P to Q and back to P, work done along the closed path in electric field is zero. For any charge, even if we take a negative charge, say minus E, while going from here to here, the work done is positive. Because the electron, if it please it place it here, there will be a force in this direction. So to move from P to Q, I have to apply a force. The work done is positive. But in this return path, the work done is negative. So the total work done in the closed path is zero. Uh, this is true for any. Conservative force. You know what a conservative force is? This yes, sir. You produce a nice uh, 11 standard. They depend only on the initial and final path. They don't depend on the path taken by the object. Yeah. So electrical force is also a conservative force. Okay, even gravitation force is the conservative force. Okay, so since um, so work done in the conservative sort of closed path will be like from P to Q, if the work done is say 5 joules, the work done to move from Q to P will be minus, minus 5 joules. Right. Obviously, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so here from here to here is same as the, or I can say, the work now along this path. This path is same as the work done to go along this path in this reverse direction. So along this path, it will be minus five joules. So here also it's minus five joules. So the work done to go from P to Q, and then back to P will be plus five minus five, so zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the basic concept is the work done to move in a conservative force, force field along closed path is zero. And electric field is a conservative force. Okay, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so, second chapter dielectrics, this is the capacitor plate, no? Yeah. Uh, what about other students? Anyone has some doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Akshay? No, sir. Okay, try to grasp for what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay sir. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is a capacitor plate. So if the charge uh, will be some Q and minus Q. So what are the electric field here in the middle? 
the sigma by epsilon naught. Sigma by epsilon naught. And sigma is the charge Q. You have the area of the plate, right? Yes, sir. Now, if I fill this um, in between region with some dielectric of dielectric constant K, with some dielectric of dielectric constant K, then what is the electric field here inside? Zero. Not zero. Uh, Sigma by K epsilon naught. Yeah, it will go down by a factor of K. And this dielectric constant is greater than one. Only it will go down, right? When you define by a quantity greater than one, the value of the electric field will go down. Is this clear? K is greater than one. Where K is a dielectric constant. Okay, but suppose I place a conductor in between these two plates, say metal. What is the electric field inside? Electric field inside a conductor, it's a basic concept, uh, which is there in chapter two only. Yeah, chapter two. Inside a metal, what is the electric field value? Anyone? Yes, you may ask. Zero, right? Yes, you may ask for No, it's zero. Zero? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because inside a metal, if there is some electric field, there is electrons here, no, which is free to move. So it will respond to it, and then the electron will move here. Okay, until this thing gets negatively charged, and there will be a positive charge here, and this induced charge will get an electric field in the opposite direction, so the total electric field is zero. This is the basic idea of conductor, no? Yeah. Conduct, once you say conductor, the first thing that should come in, there are three electrons inside. Once there are three electrons inside, even a small amount of electric field will make it move. It will move in such that this uh, movement of charge will create a induced charge, okay, which will create an induced electric field, which will oppose the inside electric field. So inside the external electric field, plus the induced one, this induced electric field will keep on increasing until this thing becomes zero. So these electrons will keep on moving until the electric field inside is present. Okay, so once I say metal or a conductor, the electric field inside will be zero in steady state. In transit situation, there will be some uh, charge, electric field, because electric field, I have turned it on. Okay, for it to become zero, this movement has to happen, right? So there will be a transient phase. But after that, in steady state, the electric field will be zero. Is that clear? Okay, clear or not? Hello? Yes, sir. Ah, so for yes, metal, sir. if you consider dielectric uh, material, what is the value of K for metal? Because once in a dielectric, the electric field goes on by 1 by K. Okay, so for a metal, what is dielectric constant? Zero. No, zero means the electric field become infinite, no? The electric field inside dielectric oh. is E by K. So for a metal, E is zero. So what is the value of K for metal? Kavya? One, sir. No, one means electric field is not changing, no. Negative, sir. How, sir, infinity? If it is infinity, then the electric field reduced by a factor of E by K, no? Which is zero. Anything divided by infinity is zero, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so we can assume that the metal is a dielectric of K equal to infinity. In a dielectric, the electric field will go down by a factor 1 by K. In a metal, it will go down completely and it will become zero. That is the same as saying metal has a dielectric constant of infinity. Because the electric field has to go down by a factor of 1 by K. And that K is infinity means the electric field is K by E by infinity, which is zero. Okay, sir. Uh, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, next one. See, dipole is. Uh, Two point charges, right? 
माइनस टेन प्लस क्यू माइनस क्यू एंड प्लस क्यू ओके सिमिलर वे डिस्टेंस से टू ए ओके सो पोटेंशियल टू डी पॉइंट चार्ज इस हाउ मच के क्यू बाय आर पोटेंशियल टू डी के क्यू बाय आर सर नो विचार इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इस आर स्क्वायर इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इस आर स्क्वायर ओके पोटेंशियल इस वन बाय आर ओके इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड टू डी पॉइंट चार्ज इस के टू क्यू बाय आर स्क्वायर दिस कम्स फ्रॉम कूलम्स लॉ because it's k to q to 1 by r square so due to this two point charge is going to find a potential at this point then i have to know this distance right let this distance be r1 and let this distance be r2 and potential is a scalar this is a vector okay some direction will be there but potential is a scalar so what is the potential at this point it is minus k q by r1 plus k Q by R two, R two has got plus Q, and this is minus Q. So this is the total potential at any point, right? Any general point. So can this potential be zero? Yes. Because one is positive, one is negative, right? It can be zero. Yes, sir. Uh, so where it can be zero? Sir, but it's... it will be zero only when R one is equal to R two. Ah, right. So it is. It will be zero. What are the possibilities? Is R one equal to R two? Okay. So where is R one equal to R two? Which point? In the middle. Yeah. So all the points here, which is symmetrically placed between these two. So what is this line called? Ah, uh, equatorial plane. Equatorial line. Okay. Uh, and if you consider the plane, then it's equatorial plane. Okay. Uh, so even for all the points in the plane, this is actually like a plane, no? Which is in the middle. This is a plane perpendicular to this line joining the two charges. So any point in this plane need not be on the line. It's equal distance from plus two and minus by symmetry. It's equal distance from plus two and minus two. For all points on this plane, the potential is zero. Potential at any point on this plane, it is zero because it's equal distance from plus two and minus two. Okay, and the net potential is this one. So when R one equal R two, which is true for all the points in the equatorial plane, the potential is zero. Okay, sir. So uh, for a parallel plane capacitor. What is the formula for capacitance? N C sir. Sir, A A epsilon naught by D. Or parallel plane capacitance epsilon naught A by D. A by D. So, but if I fill that capacitance by a dielectric material, it will go by increase by K. K. Okay. Yeah. So to increase the capacitance value, what should I do? What are the different ways I can increase the capacitance value? So we can decrease the distance between the plates, and we can uh, we can increase the area between. The increase plates. the area, sir. Uh, and I can also introduce a dielectric which has got more and more value at of k. Yes. Okay. So these are the three ways I can increase the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Uh, okay. So next one, resistivity of a metal. Okay, the meeting you will get more in ten minutes. You have to uh, rejoin again. Okay. okay sir. Uh, so once it gets cut, just uh, rejoin the meeting. Okay. Sir. Okay, resistivity of metal. Yes. Uh, chapter number three. What is the formula? Uh, one uh, six. Yes, but two L by P on. Rho into L by N. L by A, sir. Rho into L by A. 
right? It depends on the geometry, which is LNA, and the material which is rope. And with temperature, resistance will change, right? Let the resistance yeah. be R1 at temperature T1 and R2 at temperature T2. We should be more R1 and R2. Sir, sorry. Let the resistance be R1 at temperature T1. Just okay, sir. Sir, is it the R2 is equal to R1 into 1 plus alpha into T2 yeah. minus T1? So if T2 is greater than T1, then R2 is greater than R1. If I increase the temperature, resistance will go up. So the relation with resistance with temperature is R2 equal to R1 into 1 plus R1 into 1 plus alpha. T2 into 1 plus alpha T2 minus T1. Karthik, is it clear? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Okay. So resistance is R2, you said temperature T2. R1 is a resistance value at temperature T1. So if T2 is greater than T1, this is a positive quantity, right? Okay. And alpha is positive. So this is whole thing is greater than 1. So R2 is greater than R1. When T2 is greater than T1. So as temperature increases, the resistance will go up. So this temperature depends on also right for the resistivity. Rho 2 is the resistivity at temperature 2. Put rho 1 into 1 plus alpha into temperature difference. T2 minus T1. So, in this uh, formula, there are how many unknowns? R2 is formula. there, R1 is there, alpha is there, R and T2. Two so, five number, so four of the variables are given, I can find fifth one. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Only there are five variables. Yes, so, yes, sir. Given, I can find the fifth one. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. So, the electrical field lines, how do you draw them? Let me take a point charge, for example. Let me make it simple. So, this is a point charge. Q. Okay. So, if it is positive, the field lines will look like this. Radially upwards, sir. Yeah, I will be uniformly spaced because it's uniform electric field. So these are the field lines, the continuous lines. And electric field vectors, field vectors will look uh, like this here. Actually, when you go out, the electric field line will, length will decrease. Decrease. Uh, it will go as 1 by R square. Uh. Electric law, right? Electric field goes as 1 by R square. Okay, so these are the field lines. And what about the equipotential surface? The potential will be equal in all surfaces. Uh, potential surface means on the surface, potential at all the points are same. If it is 5 volts here, it will be 5 volts here, 5 volts here, everywhere will be 5 volts. So for this point charge, the potential of the surface, how will it look? It will look like this, right? All these points will have some particular potential, say V1. If you take a, another Surface like this, here the potential will be V2. So, what is the surface? These are lines, right? Straight lines. These are spherical surfaces. This is a spherical shell. Is it clear? Point charge, no, it's symmetric. It's really, all these lines are readily coming out. It's a 3D, 3D picture. So, you can assume lines in all directions. Start again. Sir. Understanding. Point charge. Do you remember the concept of free lines or not? Ah, yes, sir. Okay, free lines, you just have to draw a line uh, touching all the electric fields, field vectors. So these are the electric field vectors. 
it will look like this, right? Inset will be uh, larger as you go out, the electric field will go as one by R square. So the length of the vector will go down, but it will be radially outward. So this field line is a line which is touching all these electric field vectors. So this is how the field line will look. Okay. Weak potential surface is a surface in which uh, the potential is same on all the points in the surface. That's a on the name is clear on equi potential surface. Oh, okay, sir. So okay, so potential at these points. This point here, this point here, all will be same because they are same distance from the point charge. Or you can say potential is KQ by R, right? So all points in the spherical shell are the same distance R from this uh, point charge. So all the points in the spherical shell will be at the same potential. Is that clear? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Okay. So what is the angle between this field line and the weak potential surface? 90 degrees, sir. Yeah, 90 degrees. Will be at Okay, so this I have taken a simple point charge, but if it is even if the field lines are in some arbitrary, arbitrary directions, this is the electric field line, the equipotential surface will always be perpendicular to the field lines. Okay, so one way to understand this is suppose the field line is not perpendicular, then I can split into two components. One is perpendicular to the equipotential surface, another is parallel to the or tangent to the equipotential surface. So this is an electric field like this, then to move from here to here, there is some work involved, right? That means the potential is different from between these two points. Uh, okay, work done is F dot ds. Everyone knows this. Uh, introduced in class, uh, class 11, grade 11. Okay, work done is F dot ds. So this work done will be zero if this f dot ds is f into ds into cos theta, right? What is theta? 90, sir. What? 90. ds is what? Displacement. Okay, f is the force. Okay, so theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay, so this theta is 90 degrees. Then the work done is zero. Okay, and uh, potential potential is work done by what? Work done to move what from? From infinity to the point to move what? Point charge. charge, sir. Unit charge. charge. Okay, one coulomb. Okay, and potential difference between two points is work done to move from between the two points. So the potential difference between two points, one and two, is work done to move the charge from one to two. Okay, so if I take these, these two points, if they are the same potential, then the work done to move from here to here is zero. Is it clear? Because this thing will become zero, right? If we use no potential difference, then this potential difference is zero. So the work done to move from one to two is zero. Okay. So to move from here to here, the work done is zero means the force should be perpendicular to the displacement. And here the force is electric field. So electric field should be perpendicular to the displacement. And the displacement along the surface of the Weak potential surface. So electric field line should be perpendicular to the weak potential surface. Okay, so this is the main conclusion. Weak potential surface and the uh, 